It's always incredible to watch teams and technologies come together in new ways. On this expedition, multiple institutions have brought vehicles built with unique tools that, working together, have expanded what we know about the biodiversity of the geologist's seamounts and will help inform research here in the future. This has been just a, a really tremendous leg. We've had all these teams working together so nicely, really, really accelerating the rate at which we're accomplishing things and actually really doing science. The Mesobot, which is this remarkable instrument, it's been a tremendous addition to our understanding of what's in the mid part of the water column. And now we have this kind of two-team combination. Drix will tell Mesobot exactly where to go, and boom, we have no question about what we're seeing in those layers. And this is, I think, it's really going to start revolutionizing the way we think about what's going on in the water column and understand the, all these acoustic records that, that we've looked at for so many years, wondering what are we actually seeing? Well, now we can we can directly answer that question. To sample an expansive area like the Midwater takes new science approaches. Collecting environmental DNA data was the scientific focus for the Mesobot and DAP lander teams. Dr. Nina Yang led this sampling aboard Nautilus. For our expedition out here, we had just a simple goal of collecting some samples between 200 meters and 1,000 meters, what we call the mesopelagic zone. When we got here, we immediately got to work. Everything just seemed to work so well that now, after about 10 days of active sampling, we have about 200 samples. And so I wish I could tell you exactly what we've seen, but I think this is where the fun is about to start, where after we collect all this water, we get to take it back into the lab, run some additional analyses, and figure out what exactly did we see out here. And just from the hours of video data that we have alone, we're starting to see that the different seamounts that we were on have different biodiversity, have different patterns in the water column of what lives there. So I'm really excited to continue digging into that with the eDNA samples that we're gathering and stay tuned to learn more. The Deep Autonomous Profiler was another key tool on board, built to measure water properties and collect samples as it travels vertically through the water column. Here to tell us about what we learned is engineer Dave Casagrande. We've just finished our last dive with the DAP, collecting water samples and CTD profiles near the sites that the other vehicles have been operating. CTD profiles and collecting water samples to bring back to the lab are one of the oldest and most consistent measurements that we take in oceanography. And when we're developing new systems like Mesobot and in-situ environmental DNA sampling, it's really good to have something to compare them to and make sure that we're seeing the same sorts of values and the same animals, the same DNA that everyone else would see using sort of the more traditional methods. It's a, it's a validation of new techniques. Expanding how multiple vehicles work together offshore requires careful consideration when it comes to conducting safe launches and recoveries and coordinating logistics from the deck of the ship. Our talented deck team, led by Mike Burns, set the teams up for success during this expedition. So I guess like the success is from the back deck. One of the major ones is we have all these vehicles on board and we are having all of our equipment that goes with them. As you can see, the deck is a little bit on the crowded side, which makes it fun and interesting for the deck team to be able to deploy such large instrumentation safely and with enough people, but also to allow for the safe working of the deck. And then also to just kind of see like what are the ranges that we can deploy in and what are our maxes and what are our minimums has been really big success and I think just kind of a proof of concept that, you know, these larger instrumentations that we do have come onto the vessel, you know, we're able to not only deploy them safely, and it just speaks, you know, monumentous to the deck team that is on here uh, and the knowledge that, that all three of us are bringing to the program um, as far as our safety and then our ability to deploy just a multitude of different instrumentation. As the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute partners work to expand the agility and efficiency of ocean exploration, multi-vehicle operations will continue to help us look at unexplored and underexplored areas of the deep ocean in new ways. So as we wrap up NA-155, I wanted to share some thoughts on the most strategic successes maybe that we've had. I'm really proud of how much we've demonstrated you can get out of a single ship day. The ability for these autonomous systems to collaborate together to do something that previously took the ships being dedicated to it is now able to be offloaded and independent and the ship can go off and do something that only the ship can do. 
that equates to two or three times of the production out of one ship day with these sorts of vehicles on board, and I'm, I'm really, really proud of that.